I bloody love the board at this club. They are genuinely the best board I think I've ever had on FM. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Bolton. If you're still enjoying it, drop a like. That'd be tremendous. So... Today, we face off against sixth place Leeds United. Now, it's not going to be easy. Um, but again, I'm looking at this as an opportunity for us to just sort of continue our slow improvement. Uh, the games off camera, not the games off camera, the games in hand, a few of them were definitely played, but it seems that none of the teams around us actually won. So we do remain in 12th place in the Premier League, which is, you know, fairly solid for us right now. I'd happily take that at the end of the season if we stay up. That's the main thing, really, for me. Uh, although West Ham did apparently win. That seems to be the only big change for those off camera games. Duckens Nazon was with Wolves in 2018. Don't think he played, though. He's a striker for the Haitian national team, but I think he was born in France. Ah, okay. So, technically, though, that means our man Johnny is still the first Haitian to play play in the Premier League. And that's the main thing. The Norwegian lad not getting a work permit is especially weird if my sister's Norwegian boyfriend is free to live and work here and he doesn't have a single under 21 cap. Strange. <laughs> that one just really made me chuckle. Ready to welcome our new Nordic god, Johan. You don't mess with the Johan. A Faroese player in the Premier League. What a story. I'm fairly certain there, are, there is or has been Faroese players in the Premier League before. Whether they've played or not, I don't know. Don't Arsenal have like a Faroese goalkeeper, like the third choice or something? But nevertheless, today... We must crack on. Always kind of difficult to set expectations for a game like today. Uh, sadly, Porteous picked up an injury, as did for Maywo, so we may have to shuffle things around a little bit today. But that's fine, because it's an opportunity to bring RCM back in, and I feel like a bit it's a bit harsh on him having not played as much as perhaps he would have liked this season. I do still expect to see... I'm still concerned about Depestra, but I feel like he can come good. I've got to give him a chance. Lawrence at right side? Yeah, no, that's not happening. Lostak will definitely start there. So, the bench will be Lawrence, Bree, O, Temenuskov, Ewan, uh, Valesh, sorry, Vayes and Giles. So yeah, not too bad. As always, trying to just focus on performances right now. One thing I would say is Candela has struggled this season a little bit. I'm excited to see what we can do, whether we can continue to play okay. Against Bournemouth, we were fine. Uh, I think it's the best way of looking at it. I think the tiredness definitely crept in though. See how we do today against Leeds. If we can replicate that kind of Leicester City style performance, I'll be extremely happy. But even if we just don't look completely outclassed, that's kind of what I'm going for. These are not the games that, I mean, given that Leeds are sixth in the league, these are not the games really that we would expect to win, but you never know. We didn't expect to beat Tottenham on the first day of the season, and look where that got us. Uh, so <laughs> there we have it. Right, let's just see what we can get up to today. Lovely, uh, maybe not. Less of that, Kang, eh? Uh oh Jenkins has brought it down. Now, I think this might be the first time this uh, since I switched over to this different approach that we've actually come up against a straight 4-2-3-1 style of play. And you're going to see that a lot, so be interested to see how we get on, actually. Booty, trying to get near the box, finds Kang, and Kim flicks his head just wide. Not the best effort from him, but a couple of early uh, sighters for us is what you like to see. Kim with loads of room. He's got to find Lostak here. There's the ball. Petter Lostak again. He's got that ability. He might not be able to get the shot away, though. He does get the shot away, but it's just slightly wide. The counter-attacking. That's what a lot of the rest of this season is going to be about, what we can do on the break. We're not going to be doing fancy build-up quite as much, but... Oh, lovely stuff. Low Everton finds Lostak again. He's looking so dangerous. And he's been fouled. Easy. Rico Henry has clapped him down there. Petter Lostak, by the way. What a game changer he's been in the last few matches. Uh, don't know where the goalkeeper's going. Hi. You off somewhere, bruv? Like, <laughs> what's he doing? You won't save anything from there. Also, Ziga coming up to the halfway. Ziga's like giving it large. What's going on here? Look at him. Carlo Ziga's about to start a fight. He's literally... Are oh, the goalkeeper's going to have a fight? It's like hockey. Look at him. He's walked all the way up the pitch. He's fully picking a fight with the Leeds keeper. Oh, now you run back, Carlo. Come on. I don't even know who's on penalties for us right now. It might be Kim, actually. It is Kim. Chance for us to take the lead. Kim slots it home. Bolton 1, Leeds United 0. Kim Min with his fifth goal of the season. Carlo Ziga did everything he could to put off Radu, and it seems to have worked as we now lead at home to Leeds United. That was a very strange saga there. But again, we've taken the lead at home. This time, we must do our best to hang on to it. I know it's only a pen, but we've looked great so far. Well, that was basically all she wrote up to a half time. Leeds have had one first half shot. This is what I mean. We just look so much more stable defensively. It's great. Uh, albeit leading from a penalty, but sometimes you've got to take what you can get, really. Should be able to deal with this. Maybe counter-attack if we can get the ball off of them. It's a good ball throw. Great header clear from Depestra. And here we go. That is wonderful from him. Low Everton. He's got Kim in. Great first touch from Kim. He's into the box. Triangle. Pull it back. Oh, wait. What's happened here? Kim's still got it. He's still got it. Pulls it back for... Oh, and Jill Ney shot. I think Kim probably fouled the Leeds defender a little bit there, but we've got away with that one. But that's what I'm talking about when it comes to um, breakaways. Oh, come on. 
Roland Salai, Bolton won, Leeds won. That looked like straight down the middle. Ziga, you're an entertaining man, but I think your time next season, I think, might be the end of it. I mean, that's right down the middle. He cannot not save that. Like, I know we like to keep Ziga around for Comedy Valley because he is brilliant, but also horrendous at the same time. But that that is not a match engine thing. That is pure, we need a better goalkeeper kind of stuff, you know? But it shows you that there's easy ways for improvement. Like, just literally a better goalkeeper at that point, And we're, say, we're getting some points out of that potential situation. So another one all draw at home wouldn't be ideal, but I suppose we'd still take it, wouldn't we? <laughs> one thing I would say, though, Candela has actually had a good game. Like, he's on a seven, which is, for us, extremely high. So that, that's a rarity for him, but it's nice to see that he's actually starting to perform a little bit now. Don't you dare foul them. Just sit back, let them play it around in front of us. Good save from Ziga. That was a top stop. I think the penalties made us look better than we are as far as XG's gone today. But yet again, it's about not losing games. And I think we've definitely tightened up defensively. And that's a big deal when you look at how bad we were um, leaking goals. You know, we still haven't kept many clean sheets lately, but we're definitely looking a lot better defensively currently. And, that, and that's the main factor for me. But with throw... Oh, and it's just slips off the crossbar. I'm still going to be a bit fortunate to get away with one, but it is sixth place lead. It's taking his time with it. Ball whipped in. Lacazette Roche is cleared away, and that is surely going to do it. Yes, it is. Bolton won. Leeds United won. Once again, a lead squandered. Fair enough. That's just how it goes, unfortunately. Um, yeah, just not great from us. But nevertheless, uh, it's another point on the board, and that's kind of the main factor. We're definitely certainly looking a lot better than we were. That's inarguable. It's also four games unbeaten in the Premier League. Now, I know there's only one win in there, but I definitely feel like if we keep on playing relatively okay, we'll find our chances. Today just wasn't quite our day, but we definitely look a lot better at the back. So, some games off camera, back in a minute. Might come back in January so we can see how the new guys potentially come in as well. So, I'll see you guys in a minute. Right then, guys, we're back, and uh, we have much to discuss, because we went away to Watford and pulled us something pretty damn good. Could have been a lot better, though. Great early football from us in the first minute of the game. Regan Booty getting the ball out on the left-hand side. Eventually, his cross is flicked in off of Min for a one-minute goal, and we led at Vicarage Road. And then things got a lot better for us not long after that. Look at this for a ball from Kang. He sees the run of Lostak and just smashes it through. Great first touch from Lostak. Smashes in his third goal in three games to find ourselves two goals up at Vicarage Road. And it wasn't until the 60th minute that Watford started to come back into this game. And boy, did they. Up until that point, it was fairly even. But it's Mela Saar getting through here. Ziga should be doing better with that, if I'm honest. But moments later, brilliant defending here from um, Lacazette Roche. Eventually, Kang with the ball through. Lostak gets there, whips it across the box. And Kim puts us 3-1 up again with 25 minutes to go. But it just wasn't quite enough. And again, I have to look at Ziga here because once again for me he should be saving this effort it's not the most power he's just sort of tipped it into nothing to make it 3-2 and then in the 83rd minute ball comes short for Sibley and it's just a long range effort once again I mean that was a little bit tougher for Ziga but it could have been so much more for us in this match but still getting a point away at second place Watford and you know giving them a damn good go we were right in it sort of up until they right, right towards the end is where they just started to stretch their legs and be a little bit better but continuing our unbeaten run and scoring three times away at Watford I'm taking that frankly but it did immediately provoke me to start looking through a new goalkeeper and I think I found one as next up we went away to bottom place West Ham and we got a win Candela's ball over the top this time Kim bringing it down going round the goalkeeper Werner as we keep West Ham rooted to the bottom of the table we scored very early on and we scored very late on as well lovely work again here Kim getting the ball eventually ends up in the path of O who slips it around the side for Kim second goal of the night for him as we smash well I mean it was a pretty good performance West Ham nil, Bolton 2 they're obviously the weakest side in the league you'd have to say but we were comfortably better than them as far as creativity goes and keeping a clean sheet away from home very very important and it makes us now 6 unbeaten in the league a lot of draws in there I grant you but we're looking so much better and league wise we remain 12th still only 4 points above the drop zone though so we do have to be careful and that's the key thing going into those those tough games in January. It's good that we've got this kind of clearance now. Our goal difference is slowly improving. We definitely look a lot more capable. But let's face it, in January, we're going to lose a lot of games. So it's still going to be a very, very difficult season for us. But it's just, it feels like we're going to have a chance at staying up now. We're comfortably sitting at just over a point a game, which is fine by me, quite frankly. It feels like Norwich and West Ham look to be the main relegation contenders. But there's so many other teams down there. And that's the key for me, is that there's so many other teams down there as well. Now, I bloody love the board at this club. They are genuinely the best board I think I've ever had on FM. So firstly, they're improving the youth recruitment, junior coaching, and dumping four million pounds into youth facilities because we really do need to improve that side of things. But more importantly, I found a goalkeeper that I wanted to sign. Uh, I've been looking at him for a little while, but I wasn't sure about pulling the trigger. We didn't have enough money. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to, on a whim, ask the board for more money. They put our transfer budget currently from seven million to 25. And all of a sudden, I had enough money to trigger this guy's release clause. 
and that's where things got a bit weird. So I'm going to show you him now. Obviously, we don't know everything about it, but this is Alex Mukanya. He's at Slavia Prague. He's got 21 caps for the D Dr. Congo. You might notice how he's not joining us currently because he wouldn't join us without a work permit. Totally fair. Some players won't. That makes sense. My question is, why didn't he get a work permit? He, he is from the exact same side as Johnny DePestra. Dr. Congo are vastly higher in the world rankings than Haiti are. And he's older, too, and played more. I, and he's got 21 caps as well. So I don't understand why DePestra got a work permit, but Makanya didn't. That part doesn't make any sense to me. Unless it's due to playing games last season versus this season. I, I don't know. He's been playing on continental matches. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me as to why both players from the same club, surely Dr. Congo are higher than Haiti. They're 40th in the world, whereas Haiti are 89th in the world. So I'm still a little bit confused about how the work permit system works because every time I think I've figured it out, I then don't have it an idea. Plus, you remember, he was going to be on way more wages than DePestra as well. I'm a little bit confused by that. Um, hopefully we can try and sign him up soon, though, because I would rather like this guy to be our new goalkeeper, quite frankly, because he looks terrific. Um, so, yeah, if you've got any ideas as to why he wasn't able to join us compared to DePestra, then do let me know. I'm obviously very interested in working that out. I'm sure there's something I'm, mis I'm not noticing here, but two players from the exact same club both in very similar situations. Don't know what it is, but hopefully we can work out something and get Alex Makanya in. Maybe, I don't know, sometime in January. Maybe not. I really don't know. The other reason I decided to come back here instead of waiting until the, those other players joined us is because I feel like the Burnley game away from home is vastly more important than a Liverpool game, which we'll probably lose. I feel like you'd much rather see us in the relegation scrap games than losing 3-0 to the big sides until such time as we can actually give up a fight. Fitness, actually, fitness levels are pretty solid right now. Uh, one downside is James Bree has got an injury and he's going to be out for a while. I'll, I'll do a squad shift just to sort the bench out, but I'm going to be putting my players back in because there's no way Porteous is starting over Lostak. Like, I love Guy Porteous. You know I do. I I've been his biggest fan throughout this save, but Lostak is just... Where is Lostak? Oh, sorry. It doesn't always scroll properly. There we go. So Porteous will come out. Lostak will come in. And that'll probably have to do. I've been liking this sort of setup lately. Uh, still not overly convinced by DePestra yet, but I want to give him a chance still because we've got really no one else that can slot in there yet until my man Mansour Mohammed comes in. He might be the difference. Um, so I'm willing to go with that as our lineup for today, I'd have to say. We really do seem to be picking things up lately, and it's great to see. You know, I'm beating in six Premier League games. It's not something I would have expected. Yes, lots of draws, but that draws are not... At least I'll... If we're drawing against teams around us, at the very least, we're not losing points on them. So, we're at Turf Moor. If we come up with a victory at Turf Moor, that would be a huge step for me towards saying that we're going to survive this year. I feel like if we win at Burnley today, I will be confident in saying that we've got enough to survive. I still think we probably do anyway, but I definitely believe if we were to win here, it would be a real statement. But booty out wide. Can we get another early goal? We've been so good at doing that lately. It's been really, really useful. Early goals against Watford and West Ham have won us serious points. <gasps> They've got a player called Kudos. We could actually, in theory, have a, a midfield pairing of Kang and Kudos. I, for one, welcome our new overlords. It's perfect. Barred out on the left-hand side for Burnley, though. Henry's into the box. Do not foul him. Just keep it, keep it tight. Good blocks. Good blocks. That's fine. Giving less space in behind for teams really has made us a lot stronger and just allowing us to be compact and get blocks in on stuff way easier than we were before. Great ball through. Kim might be offside here. I don't know. He's through, though. Oh, a lovely little dink from Kim, and it is 1-0 at Turf Moor. Kim Min's 10th goal in the Premier League this season. I do believe that he's got brilliant potential for us in this save, and we lead away at Burnley. Brilliant. We take the lead in a lot of games. It's just been hanging on to them that's been an issue. Lovely ball through from Jilne. Just looks up, and Kim's made the run. That looked like handball, but the that right there is a striker with some confidence right now to just dink that over the goalkeeper and give us the lead away from home again. Come on! Great tackle from Everton, but it's bounced fortuitously back to Henry here. Just stick with him. Just hold that defensive line. No, Kang! You silly man! Oh, bury me. Uh, Ziga again. Like, you got to rate his enthusiasm for things anyway. He will fully go out there and do this. This is obviously going to be a pen. It was a clear foul. Throwing away points like that is super annoying because there's no reason for him to go in with the tackle there. Just keep shepherding him. We're not on Get Stuck In or anything. Mitrovic to step up. Can Ziga save another pen? He can! Carlo Ziga with an unbelievable stop. That's the second penalty this season that he's saved. And we find ourselves somewhat fortuitously perhaps in front. Booty with a very loopy throw. Gilles with the flick on and it's in the back of the net for Kang. He has made up for things immediately. Burnley nil. Bolton Wanderers 2. The derby. It is a derby, isn't it? Kang Dong He with his first goal for Bolton. What a weird throw in. He sort of, almost like he released it badly. Gilles with the flick on. And then he's able to get in there in front of the goalkeeper and make it 2-0 to Bolton. We lead at Turf Moor. Well, half time. It's 2-0. Most of Burnley's opportunity has come from the penalty spot itself. We look very good. I I'm pleased with that. 
Still maybe a tad fortuitous in places, but to be 2-0 up is so, so important. Uh, like We've thrown away points from these 1-0 leads because we are liable to just make mistakes here and there because of our playing squad quality. Ah, that's, that's bad from us now. Krellin, we need a big stay from Ziga here. It's a tight angle. Good-ish stop. He's kept it out. That's the main thing. Uh oh Oh, dear. Yeah, Regan Booty's absolutely knackered. We've got to get him off fast. Please don't foul him, Regan, though. Please, 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 please. Ziga again with the stop. Burnley are offering some stuff now, and Booty needs to come off. Two minutes of normal time to go. Still two goals to the good. Things are looking very, very good for us now. Since getting um, Lawrence on for Regan Booty, we've just sort of stabilised that side, and Burnley haven't been able to get in there anymore, and that's made a huge difference. Candela now to drive forward. Options for him, perhaps. Uh, a bit fortunate the way that's broken through, but he's got it back again. Maybe he can go for goal or just keep the play moving. Lost stack. Blocked. Kang. Oh, just why? Just lovely tackle from Jilne. Mopping up brilliantly there. Lost stack. Back for Jilne again. Sweeps one through the middle. Oh, what a lovely touch from O. Can he make it? Three. Yes, he can. Burnley nil. Bolton three. O with his second goal of the season. That was a gorgeous ball through from Jilne. I am liking him more and more as this season goes on because he's contributing goals. Great work mopping up firstly. But then when he gets this ball here, just to scoop this into the channel, bit fortuitously the way it breaks to O, but he's still got the presence of mind to finish from a very decent angle. Burnley nil, Bolton Wanderers three. And surely, if we keep on playing like this, we will be in the Premier League next season. Still a bit fortunate to win this game 3-0, I agree. But a back-to-back -back away clean sheets and five goals without reply is massive for us from a defensive standpoint. But one of our biggest issues was scoring goals and conceding too many. And we seem, go on, get the clean sheet, to have found an antidote to our problems right now. Spence is getting through. Good clearance from Lacazette Roche. And Temelushkov will bring that down as well. And that's surely going to do it. Lost I can play him through here. We've got options. Can we do it? Is there a fourth goal on the cards? Temelushkov. Oh no, we've overplayed it. Lost stack. Yeah, we've overdone it. Oh, it's a good tackle from Bard. That right there is huge. That moves us seven points clear at the halfway stage of the season. So that stretches our unbeaten run in the Premier League now to seven games. Now, obviously, that will come crashing down in January. Now, we're going to come back and do Liverpool and then Southampton. So January is quite a lot more games. I do apologize for the slightly more condensed episodes over the last two, but I felt that there was enough action and stuff to talk about that actually it made sense to do it the way that we have. And seeing a bit more of the games against our rivals probably is never a bad thing. So next episode, Liverpool... Man United, Chelsea, Spurs, some tough-ass games in there, but still some winnable ones in there as well. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Drop a like if you have. Subscribe if you're new. I'll stream on Twitch. Go follow there too. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.